Hello, Boyo, and welcome to the podcast with only one episode ever made. I'm sure the title might give you an idea of what this video is about, uh, but in case you don't know, I made a video about this batshit crazy show, F Boy Island. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, go ahead and watch that wherever it is. Uh, go ahead and watch that real quick, and then like and subscribe, because I might love you. Uh, but for those who have seen the video, you might remember this guy who made too many sex jokes, Mark. I reached out to Mark after he interacted with the tweet that I made about the video, and I was able to sit down with him and talk a little bit about the show. Uh, great guy. Great guy. You'll see why in a second. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. This video is a lot more laid back. We're just kind of hanging out. I did cut some stuff out just due to overall time but I am gonna release an uncut version because that's where all the juice is. Uh, it was a great conversation and it is riddled in spoilers again, uh, so you have been warned, uh, but that's enough of my dumbass. So now introducing the podcast, two nice guys walk into a bar. I love the uh, the no f boys allowed. In no f boys allowed. One thing actually, two things. Real uh -huh. quick, fit check, fit check. You got oh, me dressed okay. up. You Not yet. See, I'm, I'm rocking the shirt with the collar and then the shorts. Oh, clothes, so, nice. You know. One thing that I think you would appreciate as well. Couldn't see it before. Uh, on the Boyle channel here, we it, respect women. It, Not that's a hard I'm concept. <laughs> it, it, it's you know what? You'd be surprised though by some people. Really? I, you know, me. <laughs> hey, hey, in this in this day and age, nothing's surprising anymore. Yeah, you know, I really get that. Well, uh, let's I'll kick this off. I've got everything prepared. Looks like everything's recording. Welcome. Amazing. Mark well, thank Moran. You. Thank wow. you so much for having me on the, the Boyo channel. Excited. Yeah. To, <laughs> to give anyone who's watching who might not know, uh, you were on F Boy Island. I was season one on wow. HBO. Mm -hmm. So what wh <laughs> this show, I've seen a lot of reality TV. I, I love bad TV. I always will. Mm -hmm. What this one's hard to piece together. This one's really unique and that's hard to do when there's thousands. So uh, to get this started, how's your day going? What you doing? What'd the, you have for breakfast? The, the day's going great. I had some eggs for breakfast. Nice. Um, but but to go to go off of what you just said though, I think yeah. it's worth uh, noting for the viewers. So Elon Gale, who most of the kind of success of the Bachelor franchise is attributed mm. to, uh, so well until it's kind of drop off that happened a few seasons ago. We won't he, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, right. We're we're not here to talk about that. So yeah. he was the creator of this show. And so mm. he had been working on it for uh, from my understanding, about two and a half to three years. And so it's, it's really kind of a parody of the Bachelor franchise almost. And so what I came to find out was that I knew it was a comedy going in. And some people did not know that it was a comedy, which is hilarious. Um, and so it creates this just absolutely ridiculous. Show. I mean, it's called F-Boy Island. And so it was it was a ton of fun to be part of, but it was even more fun watching it, just kind of knowing how, you know, we film basically for three days for one episode. And so, oh. so much of this, you know, 95 percent doesn't make it in. And it's just so funny to kind of be a part of that. Like, I don't watch reality TV that much. And so <laughs> I, I kind of went into this not really knowing what was going to happen. And so wow. backstory is, I guess, in December of this past year, I was on Hinge. And I matched with this woman who she's like, hey, I, I don't live in New York. I live in L.A. And I actually have a boyfriend. But have you ever thought about doing reality television? And I was like, no, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go on The Bachelor. Like, not, I my the whole not my well, thing. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, I think the whole concept of because, you know, in, in a sense, like when cameras are around, you know, you're acting a little bit. And so like the idea of going on finding true love while, you know, a bunch of other people are watching at home to me, it's like now. Nah. And so I had some conversations and I found out it was, it was a comedy. It was a parody and a dating show. I was like, okay, this I can do. I can go on, tell a few jokes and we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Uh, so, you know, free vacation for two months to the Cayman islands. Why not? Hell yeah. Well, well hell yeah. So you actually, uh, <laughs> I could tell this is your first interview. You, you actually got to my like first four questions. So thank you. That made it a lot easier. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I've been doing a few of these. So I figured I'd hit all the things yeah. that you know you'd be asking. Now you can, now we can get to the the fun stuff. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I I've been kind of I've been looking. I'll be honest with you. I, I was I've been stalking you a little bit. I've been trying okay. to figure out who's Mark Moran. That you're more than just the really funny dude. Honestly, at least you make good <laughs> jokes too. But you're more than just a funny dude on F Boy Island. So uh, I see you are incredibly smart. You've got you've got some credentials Thank under you, you for you. sure. So going into F Boy Island, did you feel like you might have kind of like a an advantage a little bit? Because you you can probably you're witty. You've got the intellect to show off a little bit too. You got the degrees. So what was it kind of like going in there knowing you're Mark Moran? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the compliments. I appreciate it. I mean, for hey, me, <laughs> hey, I, I, I kind of knew going in, my strategy was I was going to pick one of the women and I was going to stick to her and try and minimize any controversy that I would create. Um, and also, I think kind of the one example I would give of my strategy is that I was really actually focused on trying to maintain friendships with all the guys. And I, I feel that in, you know, we're a few months past when we filmed. And so I'm probably one of the few that that kind of keeps in touch with everyone. And so oh. like new Jared stayed on my couch uh, last wow. week. Uh, OG That's Jared's sweet. coming nice. soon. Yeah, I, I got a call with Garrett after this. Wow. So, you know, I, I try to maintain touch with everyone and, and, and kind of minimal controversy. But I have to say, though, prior to going on the show, I had a friend tell me to reach out to Bennett Jordan, who was on The Bachelorette. And uh, she was like, you know, he was on The Bachelorette. You guys would probably get along. He's in New York. So oh, I yeah. go on his not having no idea who this guy is. And I go on his profile. I'm like, mm, OK, <laughs> send him an email. Yeah. And I was like, uh, hey, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about going on a reality television show. You want to get drinks, have any advice. And so he was actually very good in terms of giving me uh -huh. advice. Uh, and I think he learned a lot from his time and his experience on on The Bachelorette that I think was helpful to apply here. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah, again, you, yeah. you're getting right into my questions, man. I got to get more creative. So yeah, hit, hit me with some crazy ones. Let's do it. Oh, man, I, I'm going to have to go off script. We know <laughs> on this channel, when I get off script, I usually cut it out. So uh, <laughs> So basically, you mentioned that uh, you keep in touch with everyone. So mm -hmm. in my stalking of you with love, with love. Yes. Hey, I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> so I noticed you and Garrett, actually, I couldn't think of more of an opposite spectrum. No one seems to talk about this. Garrett's the most F we uh, we're on my channel. The mm -hmm. most fuck boy yeah. I think I've ever seen next to Charlie. Yeah. And Charlie mm -hmm. kind of redeemed himself. There was a redemption arc. Yeah. And, and you... I mean you're so far from that I, respect. I heard you mention feminism in the show as uh -huh. well. And I'm like, you're the only dude who used the term. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so who may, may know of the term, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I know you guys were roomed before. Mm -hmm. Is that what Garrett's really like off camera? So the thing with Garrett is, and I, I came up with this idea of describing him recently, where he, if aliens were to create a, a kind of a stereotype of someone who's from L.A., who is kind of like a, a, a JV Instagram influencer, it would be Garrett, right? Wow. And, and so, and, and I'm going to tell him I said that after this, um, yeah. but, but so, you know, to me, so we were room next to each other in quarantine for 14 days. So we could go out on our balconies, but really he was the only person that I had any kind of touch with relatively in person for 14 days. And so we got to know each other very well. And so I got to know a lot about his past and who he was. And, you know, he is this kind of a grandized version of uh, a human being, but he's, you know, I, I, would never go and say that. Is he a phenomenal person? Does he treat women great? No. But I do think that he's a good person under all of the layers that he has. And that once you can kind of peel the layers back, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get to know him more and more and, you know, you really become comfortable with who he is. So I do think, you know, if, topically, it's it's a very strange friendship. But I think because I was able to get to know him in more of a uh, intimate way before the show happened, that it was able to kind of really have an organic friendship form. Wow, that's that's so interesting. It's cool yeah. you mentioned the uh, peeling back layers. One thing, and I, I can't remember, probably TikTok. I'm on there a little too often. Someone <laughs> mentioned that, you know, we are humans. There's no true perfect human being. If you're mm -hmm. perfect in something else, you can be messed up. We're multidimensional. So mm -hmm. that that's 
interesting because you know i've been watching garrett's interviews he mentions you a lot and how you guys both uh-huh. have a the finance background but mm-hmm. it you know his job being bitcoin investor and you're yeah, not yeah it shows yeah. <laughs> a, a a dynamic if you will yeah, and it- and wow. I think that di- di- that dynamic is is really entertaining. We're actually talking uh, about starting a podcast because yeah. I think that dynamic is is so you know funny and unique. But I mean, I, I think it goes to say something about the show though, because it's it's kind of a narrative on modern dating. But the only issue I have with the show is that you know you're grouping people as nice guys and then f boys, and you're kind of saying, okay, you know, as a male, you're one or the other. When in reality, everyone is kind of a mix, and most people tend to fall, you know, in that gray area in between. I would say, and so you know, I'm sure if you were to ask anyone I've dated previously, they would, you know, try to have some things to say. But yeah. I, I think it's also it's like we're you know as human beings, like we're constantly evolving, changing, growing, and developing. And so my only concern is that you know people watch this and then if god forbid someone aspire to you know get cast as an f boy which actually was surprising because I, I asked one of the directors um when i was kind of debating whether to go on the show and i'm like look i get how you can cast the nice guys of this but uh and we didn't know the term yet because when i went on and in all the legal documents it was untitled dating show yeah, so i had no that idea a lot too. Be, yeah it's yeah right? such a we, strange thing you have no idea you're on what is like the bahamas i think they finally said is somewhere it, in the island. Cayman Islands. Yeah. Cayman, Cayman Islands. Islands. And, and, Even and it was, yeah, exactly. And it was filmed there because there was wow. no, uh, no mass spread of COVID because they locked their borders down. <laughs> so with their tourism des- uh, industry decimated, then they were able to kind of selectively have filming there. So we fortunately were able to do that. And it was a very intense kind of process that the production team coordinated with the government and everything. But wow. yeah, I mean, it, it made for a phenomenal place to, to be able to film and like a bunch of met a bunch of local people who were phenomenal. And I mean, I, I guess for me, like I, there were about 198 or so people who were involved on the island with the production. Uh, and then there's a team in L.A. too, who's editing and coding everything. And it's just like it, it was wild how big of a production it was. So was that like your first experience with something that that scale? Yeah, I mean, definitely being a part of it. Um, so, it, I mean, and for me, like I, I love kind of being in different experiences, new experiences. So like I probably spent about as much time with kind of the people who were doing the cameras or doing the mics <laughs> as I did the other guys. Because it's like it's like, wow, to me, actually, an interesting thing was in watching the show. And at the end, when kind of the credits come on and normally you're like, OK, I'm done with the movie. I'm done with the show off but in being able to watch that it's like i know these people and you know everything's kind of personified it's like okay like i remember this experience that actually that was like one of the coolest things because there's the people on camera but then it's just as much of an effort if not more for the people off of the camera who are lugging the cameras around all the heavy equipment so it was kind of cool to be able to see that in person no that's so cool i actually i really identify that identify with that so you know just trying to get into pretty much anything that involves a budget. Once you use the term mm-hmm. budget, that means it's a real thing, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. at least. When you get into mm-hmm. the show, so that's that's so funny. I'm so glad I I could talk to someone about this stuff because, like, the lighting, yeah. the mics. There's a lot mm-hmm. going in. The bracelets, the not the bracelets, necklaces. That exactly. was something I've exactly. I've never seen a show do that. I was so smart. You're on an island, yeah. fitting it into the crew. It took me and my girlfriend like four weeks to be like, uh-huh. what the heck? Yeah, those yeah. are the mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's so cool, and, and it's. It's so funny to see those because you're like, why are all these guys wearing beard? And, and you would look at us yeah. and assume like, well, they're probably the type that would wear these normally. If you um, have pecs, I would too, but I, I'm waiting, yeah. <laughs> you know, mine are shipping in. I got to work on it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's like the lighting, the sound. And then yeah. like, you know, for the eliminations, we would kind of be sitting in one way and then the directors would come and they'd be looking at it and it's like, oh, well, okay. The light's hitting this certain way on this person who's wearing X color clothes. Let's uh-huh. move them this way. And it was just, I mean, it was amazing to kind of see the art uh-huh. of it all. The attention to detail, especially exactly. that's exactly. such a specific thing. Wow. That's so cool. So staying on the topic of uh, the production so mm-hmm. you guys are all dressed to the nines, but like, Mark, you stood out, man. You are wearing a blazer, <laughs> you know, even uh-huh. CJ, when she asked you on the date, which I'm going to get into that in a second too, uh-huh. for that date, you know, you ask, are we going tuxedo? Mm-hmm. How much of that mm-hmm. is production trying to like say, Hey, bring this or how much of it was just, this is what I'd wear anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I normally have wear suits to work. So okay. I, I had a bunch of blazers and stuff. Um, and then going to a tropical location, I knew it was going to be entertaining to bring a few of those. Um, actually, and I've never told this story before. So, uh, the guy who I, who I go to for suits, his name's yeah. Arthur, uh, at Enzo in New York. And so, uh, basically I hit him up like two weeks prior to going to the Island. I'm like, Hey, I, I just made the decision to do this. Um, is there any way you have any, like, you know, kind of stuff that one could wear on an Island? And he was like, it's funny you say that I have a guy who just ordered a linen suit that I, you know, it's basically your size. Um, he got it for his, uh, I think it was his wedding anniversary and he, it was, it wasn't white enough or something. So it's kind of like yellow. And, uh, he's like, I think we can make it work. So I'm like, okay, great. So I get this suit for free. It's got the guy's wedding anniversary stitched in it, which is hilarious. So that's, that's the one I'm wearing on television. <laughs> You're wearing another man's suit. Hey, hey exactly, exactly. I ain't going to so, tell no one except my uh, entire channel, but the, the whole channel knows. Me. Whole channel knows. So it's a great suit. Great. So... I, I mean, I sweat through it wow. so many times that, you know, I'm sweating I now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <It's> right? <laughs> But then the, wow. the colorful blazer that I wear in the interviews, yeah. I, I had to go like I had one pair of bathing suits before going on the show. So I was like, well, they, they send you a list of like stuff to bring. And it's like, oh, okay. all right, I, I guess I need nine more. So I'm like at this mall in New Jersey and I see the Vineyard Vine store. So I walk in and then there's this blazer there. It fit and it was two thirds off. So I was like, OK, wow. that's going to be hilarious. And then when the production team saw it, they're like, <laughs> that is the interview suit. That's what wow. you're wearing. Perfect. <laughs> so it, it feels like it was just perfect alignment of everything the the odds of one dude who's just like nah too white yeah too yeah, off right? white whatever it's, it's, wow. especially in you know uh january february of a global pandemic worked out great the odds are so wow yeah. well thank you for that little exclusive hey, nice so uh kind of staying in the same realm did you get any chance to like speak with nikki glazer what what was that like having the director's have to do certain things and versus what they were mm -hmm. like, Hey, just do whatever you're here, do your show. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing is too, you it's unscripted, right. But everyone's okay. kind of being guided in a certain direction. And so okay. that's what I'm looking know, for guys. Yeah. And okay. so I, I knew, look, I'm, I'm not winning the show. I knew that I'm not going to be there to create <laughs> if enough you, controversy. Oh, okay. But real, real quick tangent. <laughs> It's funny how it's cut. Like one of my favorite lines of it is when uh, Sarah and Garrett are talking and Jesus. so, yeah. Right. And, and she's like, yeah, you know, like uh, you only have one life. And he's like, I know that's literally so true. You only do. And it's just like, that is comedy gold. Like that's just the perfect parody oh. of a reality dating show. It's so, perfect. you know, another thing about perfect comedy gold and this this rang true for every nice guy. I do identify uh -huh. as a knife guy, a knife guy too. You know, I buy knives. I have a home, unfortunately, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, the, the perfect scene in episode two, and I watched it four times. I watched your episode, episode three and two uh -huh. the most. Yeah. When Same. Casey looks CJ in the eyes and says, we're going on our second date. And she goes, Oh, uh, do you know where Mark is? I'm I yeah. lost it. Mark. I lost it. That was the oh. greatest feeling knowing Casey's an F boy. That's mm. easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm, the feeling of like, there yeah. is a, and, and, and this was great. It was, <laughs> it was so funny too. Cause the night prior when we uh, had uh, a little party at the cottages where all the guys were, I was speaking with her. I'm like, look, I know there's a bunch of other guys here. You yeah. got to get to know them. I'm not worried. So, you know, whenever you want to get me and she's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like I'll get you when I need you. Don't worry. So I stay up to like four in the morning talking with my roommates and I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I'm definitely not going on a date tomorrow. And so I don't shower anything in the morning and I'm sitting, uh, you know, on that kind of U shaped couch. And then the production mm. team was like, Hey Mark, can you move over there? And then Casey, can you go over there? And I should have, Something should have registered, but I was like, oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Damn. And then she walks up and it, they had the perfect camera angles for it. It was just I wow. mean, great. So it was really unscripted. This was truly like they very guided. But I'm sure at that point, hearing kind of how it was going, CJ probably yeah. said, no, I'm picking Mark. Yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it, mm -hmm. Wow, that's such a that's crazy. This show really, to me, The Bachelor and Bachelorette and those very Love Island to a degree. It seems so scripted, but mm -hmm. this show, mm -hmm. I, 
you know, now I'm getting to talk with you and, and uh, yeah. I've been doing my research. It seems like it was just perfect situations. The casting exactly. had to be insane. Oh, I mean, they did such wow. a phenomenal job with the casting. Like, it, I mean, you think about the diversity of it. Wow. That's it's yeah. one of the they did one of the best jobs that's ever been done in reality television. I've never and, seen a cast that diverse. Ever, and, and that was part things. of the beauty of it is it's like, you know, we were up till four in the morning because we had so much to learn about each other. And it's like wow. my roommate, Anthony, said to me one time, he's like, look, like if I were to see you on the street, we'd never be friends. But like now we're boys. And it was awesome because it's like, wow. I think especially in, in today's times where everyone's divided and so divisive, like, you know, by being forced to be around people, get outside of your comfort zone, you realize right. how much more we all have in common than we do apart. And it's like, you know, we go throughout our day, whether consciously or subconsciously making judgments about people. And it's like once, you know, you, you really have to get to know someone, you realize how much you like a person and, you know, oftentimes how different, you know, your judgment is after that than it was when you first met them. So I think that's like part of the beauty of the show because you just see us all getting along. Like half the time they'd have to be like, all right, guys, like you got to go like talk to the girls, like whatever. It's like we're hanging Screw out. The girls. Like, we're having a blast. Yeah, they're, they're there. They'll find we'll yeah. get the show yeah. done. Don't worry. Yeah, about we're it. not we're not finding love here. It's like, you know, <laughs> let them go. Came in islands. Want. You kidding me? No, <laughs> I'm going to came. In the <laughs> island, and then I'm gonna leave. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's my exactly. one F boy joke. I, I'm, uh, I'm done. <laughs> it's uh, a good one. It's a good one. I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I that makes my day right there. So, hey. um, you know, speaking especially about the 24 men, we're talking men, the, these mm-hmm. big dudes, and you know, yeah. I had a question about. I think you kind of already handled it for me, but I noticed you're in great shape, and you're, you know, being Thank in you. the banking world, you don't, you don't really have to be. So, yeah. Getting on the show, did you have to bulk up or has health always been a part of your life? You've always cared to be healthy and strong and kind of what's what's your world about uh, that? Yeah. So I, I ran track in college. And so I, uh, I really, every day I have to exercise just because I, I have ADD. I can't sit still otherwise. So for me, it's kind of like a mental health thing, physical health thing. Um, so I've always been in good shape, but I get to the Island and I'm looking around at some of these guys and it's just like, like, what what the hell? Uh, OG that, Jared. Oh my God. Uh, OG Jared, Sean. And it's just Fucking like, Hulk. Sean's th- <laughs> 35 years old. Like, how do I compete with that? And it's funny, like now wow. following him on social media, it's like, oh, you're jump roping an hour a day. That's why you like, look, this. it's just like these ridiculous wow. amounts of cardio and lifting. And so, you know, I was one of the more normal looking Islanders, but some of these guys are just, hey, you're, like, don't, don't discredit yourself. You're in great yeah. shape. First thank of all, you, you are you. in like, you're shredded. I, <laughs> I'm i looking through, you know, your Twitter and I was like, is that Mark? Oh my God. Why is he hiding all that? Jesus. Well, I mean, so. you see OG Jared and it's just like, you know, the I, incredible Hulk. <laughs> you know, it's Wild. funny you mentioned that. I, um, I, you saw my video. I don't know how much of it. I appreciate you. I watched it all. Clicking. I watched it all. Stop it. We, you know, I, I would have a sound effect here. Uh, to all the boyos, Mark is always welcome here. This guy's great. We, he gets a 10 out of 10. It. First 10 out of 10 person on here. But um, I had a joke about Jared because I know someone uh, named. He's my uh, I'll cut that up. I know someone that I used to work with and he was, you know, he scared the shit out of me. Like yeah. I, I couldn't talk to him because it's just such an intimidating look. He looked yeah. if Jared was 23. That's what he looked like. Or is Jared, Jared, I don't care how old he is. He looked like yeah. Jared younger. Mm, and, mm. you know, one day, I don't know what I said. I said something like, I like Naruto, or I said, I like, I like anime of some kind. Mm-hmm. And his face lit up. And I was like, what the heck? Best yeah. friend to this day. So I had a That's joke awesome. where I was like, oh, Jared, and, you know, his tiny little shorts. I was like, mm-hmm. I know I'd get along with this dude. Greatest yeah. guy. And yep. of course, like I said, I didn't watch past episode two that was honest yeah. to god i didn't care mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then i watched the rest and i'm like oh thank god i cut that joke out because jared ended up being way more complex and yes. way more dynamic and a, a lot kind of a darker side that i i didn't yeah. appreciate yeah. watching mm-hmm. but you know it, it's a show so did you have anyone that you were like oh I, I know this guy and then you're watching as a viewer you're like holy shit didn't know that so I think it's kind of more how people were cut. Like with Garrett, okay. I knew, you know, you know that, that I mean, they have so much material to just, yeah. right? We all knew. And so with OG, it, it, so I mean, when I first met him, I was Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'm there wearing a suit because <laughs> we just got out of quarantine. I'm like, well, 
Yeah, I mean, I know how I'm being judged. And he's there in this these tight fitting clothes. And the first thing he says to me, he's like, well, you know, I consider myself uh, imperfectly perfect. And I was like, what the fuck? The fuck does like, that mean? Oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, oh okay. Cool. Like, you know, That's cool. you're don't hurt me. First impre- yeah, like, the, don't <laughs> kill me. And so um, then, you know, was able to really kind of get to know a deeper side of him. And he obviously, he comes out, I don't think in a way that if you, I mean, well, I know in a way that if you were to get to know him, you mm-hmm. would think is very different, but it's almost kind of like the first impression that he made on me, where it's just, a, I, I don't understand. I've never met someone like him. That's almost his character through the show. And yeah. so like the, the yelling yeah. in the interviews and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But it's, it's funny eggs. though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, I didn't see that being filmed. So then you see it and you're like, oh, that's got it. Got it. Wow. Um, but one, one exclusive for you too is, so I think it's episode... I think it's episode two when he goes on a date with Nakia and he's wearing the tight white shorts. Those are actually mine. And so oftentimes like we trade Ah, off. So, so, yeah. So how funny is that? His (laughs) tiny little shorts because they were his. Yeah. yeah, Makes so much sense now. Yeah. Wow. And, and so it's like, I was wearing a pair of glasses (laughs) in the um, first elimination. And so then if you look when OG Jared is wearing glasses, those are my glasses. So it's like, we all kind of share. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I knew when he (laughs) had the glasses on, I'm like, you haven't worn these before. Is that a fashion statement? Is it? Oh, fashion statement. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so funny. And the scarves. He's the only dude I've seen wear a scarf on an Island. Power to him. I will say. Hey, absolutely. That style. Y'all, mm. all, all of you guys had style, and I was like, "Damn, I need to up my game a little bit." This is yeah, gonna be yeah, slacking right? if I'm talking about this. Getting into it, it's post elimination. You know, you're mm. you're getting out. You're like, ah, fuck, I knew this would happen. Yeah. So you're taking in this limo to the grotto or the castle, as some people are calling it. Mm-hmm. Can you explain the the relief? I know you mentioned the bunk beds were kind of eh. yeah. The, what, yeah. What was the castle like? What was it like? Just not just growing out. So it, it was kind of funny about the castle because when I uh, went on a date with CJ, we were talking about feminism and we drive past yeah. the castle and I'm like, you know, it's kind of funny. We're driving past the castle right now. Cause like you think about the princess complex that because yeah. of Disney movies, you know, women from a young age are taught that like a, a knight in shining armor is going to come rescue them and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that leads to a <laughs> new Cinderella <laughs> movie. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so she doesn't say anything back. I'm like, that's, I mean, that's surprising. That was a great comment on my part, like tap yeah. myself on the back. And then I, I realized it was like her head was kind of tilted because she was listening because she had a device in her ear. Uh, and so that was like a, another dear. funny production thing. But but in getting to the castle, uh. I mean, it was great. Like we would film for, you know, two to four hours a day for kind of some B-roll type stuff, all the comedy stuff. Yeah. And then we'd get a hangout with Nikki uh, when she was there. So that was awesome too. Uh, and getting great to know host. her and kind of, uh, it, she's phenomenal. And actually a guy who you'd really enjoy is so Andrew uh, Colton. Her oh, warm up act. Loved he's, Andrew. Yeah. He's the man. And wow. so we'd be working out and it's like, I'd run into him. It's like, well, I'm not finishing the rest of my workout because we'll just be talking. But he's just like, they met um, by, they were in New York and Andrew was walking dogs uh, in like 2016 because his comedy career wasn't wow. taken off. And so she takes a picture of one of the dogs he was walking because I, I don't know, maybe it had like three legs or something, I think is what it was. So then she posted on her social media, someone uh, else who knew him was like, hey, that guy's actually a comedian, blah, blah, blah. Wow. They met up again. And then she, the guy she was working with at the time, who was a warm back, she's like, Mm-mm, like yeah. Andrew now. And here they are having this podcast that they do four times a week. So he's that's phenomenal. crazy. Hilarious. I didn't know Andrew was a comedian. He never, yeah. he didn't, they didn't show that a lot. Yeah. Oh, oh, so wow. He, that that's Andrew um on on the show. This is oh Andrew different Andrew. Col- yeah, yeah. So he's oh, not actually bad, on bad. screen, but he was okay. there the whole time. And so it's like he was helping, wow. you know, writing Nikki's script with certain jokes and stuff like that while oh, they yeah. would, you know, during the mornings like do their podcast. So wow. not not on camera, but absolutely oh, hilarious. Oh, I now I know exactly what you're talking about. Funny we speak about that. I know you and Garrett have a lot of the financial conversation but uh Divish mm. doesn't get talked about a lot is he also in that finance world a little bit this is more of a off the yeah trip, yeah but so i've been he, seeing he's in there so he is kind of a, a marketing media manager for yeah. influencers and so uh, okay. he i mean he's he does so much stuff overall like 
you know, right now he's focused on NFTs and he's just always kind of out there doing the Hollywood thing. So uh, I would say he's less kind of like pure financially focused, but you know, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's definitely in the conversation, Entertainment. I'd say. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Cause he has a podcast too. I've been looking, I'm, everyone has a fucking podcast. I know. Right. It's so you know what? Saturated. I'm calling it right here. This is, this is the nice guys podcast. I love the, it. The I only it. podcast with one episode. You're welcome <laughs> on the channel, but we're only doing this one episode. It's exclusive and it's prime I love content. It. I love it. <laughs> so uh, just to kind of sum it up, I'll let you get back to your day in beautiful New York. Wonderful background. Thank, um, you. Thank you. So jokes were a big part of your identity on the show. Mm-hmm. And obviously everyone's going to ask you to tell a joke, but fuck that. Who were some of your comedians growing up? Who were the people who got you interested in wanting to make some jokes. Okay. So that's a, I've never been asked this question. This is that this is awesome. I want to know. (laughs) So in thinking about, I would say Dave Chappelle, when he does his skit (gasps) in DC, I wasn't allowed to like watch comedy central when I was like, you know, 10 or whatever, when this came out. Yeah. And so uh, my brother shows it to me and it was just like this moment where, cause I grew up outside of DC and he's just talking about unique things. Like he tells this joke where at the time there's this massive, like crack, uh, crack cocaine epidemic. Oh, oh yeah. And, and, and so he's like, uh, you know, it sucks having to raise your kid in DC because you can't be like, Hey, don't, don't do crack cocaine. What are you going to be when you grow up? And it's like, well, I can be the mayor of DC. And there was something about, you know, it, that's such a serious situation. It's so raw, but you bring humor into it. And so I hadn't really thought about humor as much as I ever had until I was on the show. And you're like, you know, it's, it's kind of the truth and the vulnerability in humor yes. that makes it right. And yeah. if it's just made up or whatever, then it, there's, it's not funny. And that's like why we love the office. Cause it's so relatable and it's true. Um, so I would say Dave Chappelle, I love stuff from The Office, but Mike Birbiglia is a guy who I find absolutely hilarious. I've watched well. one of his standups not too long ago. Yeah, I'm I'm super into comedy. So mm-hmm. especially I, I feel like and something I'm trying to do with this channel is I feel like there's been a conversion into how can we do stand up comedy in different worlds? And that's why mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I could get a hold of you because you're doing yeah. to me stand up on reality TV. And you don't it, see that a lot because it's more, oh, situational, awkward, ha, ha, ha. No, you're making yeah. jokes. The reptile de- de- <laughs> that, that joke yeah. was hilarious. That, get a load of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, these are jokes I've heard before, and I love these. And, and it's funnier to me. Like, I, I honestly find it funny when jokes don't hit. So it's like yeah. one time uh, Nikki on her podcast, she was, and she said this to me in person, but she was like, you know, Mark takes more risk than I do. And when they pay off, they're great. When they don't, they don't. But to me, I almost find it funnier when they don't pay off because that's yeah. kind of like a Michael Scott moment or something like that. So, you know, to be able to do it in real time on reality television, it was just like, oh, OK, like, yeah. you know, maybe I should go do a stand up routine or something because it's fun. But it's also it's totally. like it, co- comedy is so much more work than people think. Like it is purely an art form that one has to, like, really prepare for and kind of think about so much. And I think people yeah. are just like, oh, like so and so's natural, like Nikki Glazer is naturally funny. She just goes up and, you know talks about her vagina and then it's funny and it's like no there's so much thought put into that and it's like in terms of like for her personally like how you know kind of joking about you know all the sexual stuff in the beginning is what gets her on the scene and then she's transitioning more and allowing that platform to kind of be more serious about women's issues which is just like a fascinating thing because i think comedians historically it's like they're just comedians but now you really see the impact that you know just being a public voice can have no, I completely agree. And especially Nikki, I think was a great choice. And I, Perfect. I want to say it was one of the producers that said Nikki was not born to do F boy Island. F boy Island was born to be hosted by Nikki. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool seeing not only a comedian, which already makes this a vastly yeah. different experience, but mm-hmm. a, a strong female presence that is saying, no, we're protecting these girls. You guys are the fuck ups. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, and it was so refreshing, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, I think it's like, to me, it's like you want, and like, I I've watched the bachelor in paradise since it started coming on. It's like, you watch crazy show. (laughs) It's like this, it's just though the, the concept that it's like, Oh, I'm this perfect person. Like blah, blah, blah. Just like, no, you're not Garrett. No, (laughs) excuse me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's like, no one is. And to be able to kind of joke about that, like I would always say, it's like, you know, look at the end of the day, 
we're all an F family and we're probably all more idiots than we are anything. So, you know, True. and you know, if you can't kind of realize that about yourself, well, you're probably not really living in reality. So, yeah. On top of that though, comedians though, you mentioned Dave Chappelle words then mm-hmm. I, I can say a lot of people who spoke to me, Bo Burnham's a big one. Mm-hmm. And I think yep. he's very important because he says, no, like I'm part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Let's, mm-hmm. let's work towards it. I love Dimitri Martin. And, yep. and I feel like right, yeah. I put you in these categories because I feel like you can appreciate this style of comedy because you're doing mm-hmm. witty stuff. These are jokes that Thank are, you. yeah, they're written, but where you're telling them, how you're mm-hmm. telling them, how quick, how mm-hmm. you know when not to make a joke. A lot of yeah. it too, where you're just like, this is insane. When it was mm-hmm. like, Jared was talking to some, the show's crazy. Everyone's fighting. Yeah, well, all and the time. It, it's, <laughs> it, it's funny though, because it's like, before I go on my date with CJ, I like was like, okay, I, I had a list of like, just shit jokes oh, that yeah. I've heard over the years. It's like, all right, <laughs> let me, let me put a few of these in my head. But yeah. uh, in watching the show, it's like when I'm like, uh, when it's the two Jared's having a fight and I'm like, you know, this is kind of like an ESPN two boxing match. And then they play the sound. Like I just thought of that. And I didn't even remember saying that until I was watching on camera. And that's like one of my favorite moments of it. So it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's so funny because you never know what's going to come out of your mouth that like, you know that. Right. And oh, it's, it's totally. just like, and, and sometimes that stuff, just, you know, being yourself rather than rehearse is even funnier because, mm. you know, you know how to deliver it in a way that's funny. And it's like that, like Dimitri Martin's delivery. That's honestly like 50 percent of why Crazy. he's so funny. It's just he has a, a Crayola joke where <laughs> I can't even remember the joke, but I remember laughing so mm-hmm. hard at a joke about a crayon. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, that's such a gift. And I, I think, you know, this is just me, a guy who was you know, got 80 subscribers or something, making some jokes yeah. on here. Yeah. I, exactly. I think you've got a skill for it. I, if you did stand up, hey, I'd find a way to go to New York <laughs> and see it. I, I think you are honestly an enigma on the show. You are, you, they don't give you a lot of time on the show. And I was I disappointed because you're I, such, so different than all of them. Really? Hey, hey, and they don't show CJ kissing me either, but you know, what, what are you the hell? Yeah. So that, that happened. You got, uh, you got the yeah. switch. So, I mean, it, it, it was funny because like the day went way better. You know, if it had gone poorly, I would have been eliminated the second episode. And so well, like it went really friend, well. Sure, friend. Yeah, I was She's like, used right, the right. term friend like it's yeah. nothing. Well, wow. it was funny because what they don't show is in the third episode, I um, I was talking to one of my producers the day of probably at like four, four yeah. thirty, and elimination was at like seven. And so she was like, you know, uh, how good a public speaking are you? I'm like, well, I'm pretty good at public speaking. She's like, nah, out of everyone speaker, here, I'm actually, like, yeah. And, and thank you. I was like, well, you know, out of everyone here and I look at the camera, I'm like, I'm the best at public speaking. And I and she starts smirking. So I'm like, oh, I know that I'm getting called up to give a speech tonight. So I'm thinking like, look, if they're going to call me up to give a speech, like I know I'm not being eliminated number one because my performance has been good, but I'm going to give the best damn speech wow. they've ever heard. So I go on and I, I my strategy was just to talk until they wouldn't let me. So I was talking about feminism for about 15 minutes. And I was like, you know, CJ, you called me up here because you said that I wasn't the best to take a compatibility photo shoot with, but I would be the best to take a LinkedIn photo shoot with. And then from there, just kind of oh, started good. intertwining jokes. Yeah, thank you. And that's uh, really, yeah. Uh, they don't put it in there, but I mean, Dude, it was, what it was the hell? absolutely why. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not as wow. entertaining as some things, but you know, it's, uh, it is, it, it's, it's fascinating to be part of the process and then to mm. see kind of just what makes it. And then to think it's like, Oh, what, you know, the editing team, they have total yeah. control over this, not the producers who are kind of thinking of things in real time. It's all that post edit. So it's just a fascinating process. It really, it really is. No, I, yeah. uh, I appreciate that so much. And uh, thank you yeah. for coming on here, but, Absolutely. Don't leave yet. I'm not done with yeah. you. I have a, a new a segment that I haven't seen anyone do personally because, you know, we're here. We're new. We're, we're taking mm. risk. I'm taking exactly. some notes you from you. We're taking risk. some risk. Mm. So what I did is I found 10 of my favorite misleading lines from the entire series that you have now forced me to watch. That's on you uh-huh. now. Think about that. Okay. <laughs> so I found top 10 favorite lines and you have to tell me if it was said by an F boy or a nice guy. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready for the first one? Yes. All right. And these are going to be difficult. Got to be toned in. All right. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm getting snitch vibes. Not going to lie. Was that said by a nice guy or an F boy? That I believe was said by Josh. So a nice guy. Damn. Shit. I got, I got to get strong. That was said by nice guy, Josh. You killed it. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. One for one. I'll be honest. This one's a gimme, but it's my favorite thing ever. I'm not an F boy. Namaste. 
Charlie. Easily Charlie. We got our first one. I'm I'm getting snitch vibes, not gonna lie. We talked about that was nice guy, Josh. Mm. Uh, I'm not an F boy. <laughs> Namaste. Yep. Uh, my favorite. Honestly, he was very entertaining. Charlie, <laughs> he's the reason I, I watched episode two. I was like, this is nuts. So yeah. getting into number three, <laughs> it's kind of scary. The thing about falling in love is that you're truly falling. Nice guy or F boy? I think it was F boy. <laughs> oh, it is. It's one of my favorite Gar- is lines. Is it Garrett? It's OG Jared. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that, it was mm-hmm. highlight yes. of that episode. Yeah. And it was <laughs> hilarious seeing this guy saying that and then yeah. seeing he's an F was like, damn, y'all don't mm-hmm. care. I mean, well, with him specifically, one of, and I think this is a top reality TV moment ever when he says to Nikia, I love, or I think I'm starting to yeah. love you. And Colin yells out, oh, what's her last name? And he, he's like, well, that's oh. something I want oh. to get to. I mean, just gold. Mm. So again, <laughs> <laughs> Getting into our next one. I'm sorry. These I did these at like 4 a.m. and they're still very I love funny it. to me. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I definitely want to get to see what Sarah's all about. Divij. Not Divij. It was what? a nice guy, Paul. And I it, oh. I'm telling you, these are hard. I'm making them yeah, very difficult. These are, yeah, cool. Good for wow. nice guy, okay. Paul. Really? Okay. It was the way he said it. He didn't mean it like that. It was during elimination. Yeah. yeah. And I was, oh, I laughed so hard. I'm like, you sound like such a fuck boy <laughs> saying I definitely want to get to know. Yeah, about yeah, it. exactly. Exactly. Oh, this one's hard. This one's hard. Okay. This one's towards the end. Have you seen the whole season? I have. Yeah. I assumed, but I wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, I'm here, my man, and I'm here to stay. Yeah, I think it's a nice guy. Only because you're picking up on my body language. It was a nice guy. Can you guess was the nice Josh? guy who said it? No, I'll give you a second guess. Oh, for, Fernando, I think. It was Fernando. Yeah. yeah nice guy. Yeah, Fernando. Yeah, yeah. He's giving a massage, nonetheless, yeah. to Nakia. And- that was a weird date. That was. Yeah, I was pissed. I, oh, shit. I, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about that. It's like, I don't know what I would do if I'm like just watching I'd another guy. Yeah, I'd be like, can I? I lost. Like. <laughs> Can I be picked up from the island? Please? I'm taking my L and I'm going home. I lost. <laughs> this, is, this isn't fun. all right. Getting getting back on track. Yeah, these, these uh, are tough ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it gets worse. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> you're trying to get spicy. I'm trying to get vulnerable. <gasps> oh, yeah. um, I picked these out very late at night. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is good. You're tr- Oh, oh, oh. That sounds like an F-boy thing. It was an F-boy thing. Can you guess the F-boy, though? I, I mean, I want to say I want to say OG. No, it's Greg. Soft-spoken Greg. Greg was another big yeah. one. I did yeah. not think Greg was a... Especially after he came out, he's like, no, yeah, I fuck a ton of girls. But, like, yeah. I respect them. I was like, yeah, that's mm. what I want. If you're going to yeah. put F-boys yeah. on here, just, yeah, I've slept with a lot of women, but I respect mm. the general concept. Exactly. That's fine. And then, yeah, yeah, whatever. But yeah, I'm getting you're spicy. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> and I was like, damn, true. All right. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no nice guy is going to say that. Getting back into it. We had our last thing trying to get spicy, mm. vulnerable, our lovely F boy, Greg. Uh, next one. I'm going to tell you now, this one's this one's funny to me. I know in the end of the day, she's going to come running back into my arms. F boy case. Oh, nah, it's a nice guy. I'll give you, I'll give you one guess for the nice guy though. It, I'll tell you, it's not surprising. <laughs> uh, new Jared, new Jared, new Jared was talking about CJ and when CJ and Casey were together mm-hmm. and he was like, I know. And I was like, dude, you're coming off like an F boy. Yeah. Yeah. Saying exactly. Weird shit like this. Exactly. Eh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well sure. fine, fine. Self proclaimed. <laughs> yeah, self proclaimed. But you know, okay. But it's funny he said that. I was like, eh, all right, nice guy. Uh, so next one. Oh, this one's great. Honestly, right now I don't see anyone else that is competition. Uh, F boy Casey. No, he said something uh, similar. That was the trick. Yeah. Exact word for word. This was nice guy Sean. Okay, I, I remember first that. Date. Yep. Yep. yep, first date with Casey mm. in the in the house. 
Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, let's see. Number nine, number nine. She's not letting us handle anything. She knows what she wants. That sounds like Fernando. I think it's for nice guy Fernando. Again, that was another it, it, one. I, it's not. <laughs> it's it's about the dance competition, I think. It is about the dance. You got that right. It is it is an F boy, but I did this was one it, as a trick. Was it Greg? No, it was Jomar. No one remembers Jomar. Yeah. F boy uh. Jomar. He was talking about Nakia. Yep. Yep. Same group. Same group. Yeah. You're right. Great. But great I, performance there. I mean, hey. it, you know, I don't think we talked about. There were two exotic dancers on the show. Hell yeah. It, Exactly. Take the stigma exactly. away. They were hilarious. Yeah. And Sean? Are you kidding mm. me? Was Sean that nice? Oh uh, yeah. Sean is just the Damn. greatest human being you'll ever meet. That is awesome. <laughs> All right. Last one and my okay. personal favorite. Okay. I would love nothing more. Let's do it. I think I think I said that. You did. Ah, oh, <laughs> I was gonna get you. You got me on that one. That was a no, good one. So- that was a good one. Yeah, the, these lines were funny because I, I had oh, to, this, I had my ear AirPods in. I'm like, is this yeah. really what they just said? And that that picked, was a great way to end, too. Out. Very oh, tricky. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. I mean, hey, it's that was great having <laughs> you on. You you did 100% in my eyes. You got, they, hey, you got 100%. You so yeah, uh, no. I will be uh, subscribing to the channel, so I can't oh, wait to watch. stop it. You do what you want. You're an independent <laughs> man. But, you know, Mark, I got to say, this was the first interview I'm probably ever going to have on here. Uh, it might be one of the only ones. But hey, you, this was a great, great conversation. I really enjoyed Absolutely. my time. Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah, speaking no. with you, getting to know you. This was great. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a, everyone does those weird time things. Fuck that. Whatever you uh, want to plug, take your time. I'm going a, I'm to a lay back. You do your thing. You plug what you want to plug. Hey, I, uh, my, my social media is all it's Mark Moran. So feel mm-hmm. free to, to follow me on that. And, uh, I love, I love going on Twitter and just searching F boy Island. So you got oh, any yeah. good takes, let them out there. And it's, it's hilarious. Oh, if you haven't checked out Twitter, it's that's oh, how I found you. And it was amazing. <laughs> I love it. Dude, your, your Twitter's funny. Thank you. All that aside, I'll have all the stuff in the description and everything. Amazing. Don't worry about any of that. Uh, you have a YouTube channel. I don't know if you want I to do. mention that. It's, I've been all your stuff. Well. <laughs> I liked everything. <laughs> I truly watched all of them. I Honestly, I, I'm genuinely interested. I've always been interested in banking. And I was like, oh, yeah. shit, this is great. I'll, I'll no, put but, some um, more stuff out there for you. Hell yeah. But uh, <laughs> you are always welcome. You are always welcome to the Boyo Tropical Fam. Wonderful, and wonderful. that's it. I, I hope you have a great day. And I'm going to thank go you ahead so much. It was a, it was a pleasure this. being part of the Boyo Tropical Fam. So uh, yeah. hopefully we'll do it again sometime. On the well, no episode two to our podcast. The, <laughs> oh wait, no, that's not what I wanted to call it. Shit, well, I wrote we, this joke last night. <laughs> you were yeah, nice guys yeah, walk into a bar. That's okay. the name of our podcast. Two I nice like guys it. walk into a bar. I like that. I like. There that. we go. And then we shit on Garrett. No, I'm, I didn't <laughs> say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> no, but thank you so oh, much, and mm-hmm. uh, have a great day. Wonderful. You as well. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a good one. And hi there. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to anybody who has watched my video, liked a video, uh, pretty much interacted in any way. Uh, We are about to hit our first milestone on this channel, our first hundred subscribers. So I am very excited and I've decided we are going to make a goal for ourselves. We are going to go ahead and hit 200 subscribers before the end of the year. It's not impossible. I think we can do it. I've got some really fun videos planned, uh, but you know, send it to a friend or someone who likes jokes and, and silly shit. But I do want to go ahead before I let you go. I want to thank these people. You guys are the boils of the week. I would not keep making these videos without you guys, because if you didn't comment, uh, I would probably just sit in my room and sulk like a big fat baby. Uh, but really. I cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, That's it for this one. I might love you. Till next time, boys. Peace out. Bye.